Let's take a closer look at the story of the last war zeppelin LZ-114, or its military name, L-72. L-72 was finished just at the end of the war and was the latest generation of zeppelins. It had a length of 226.5 meters, which was enough for 16 gas cells with a total volume of 68,500 cubic meters. The diameter was 23.9 meters and the empty weight 28.5 tons. Loading capacity was at 51 tons. It had six Maybach engines with 245 horsepower each and a top speed of around 120 km per hour. Commander Butler did the first test flight and the plan was that after the last payment was done, the second test flight would be completed and the ship would be brought to Nordholz as a military Zeppelin. At this point, it was still owned by the Zeppelin company. Now, suddenly the war was over. The next step would have been to declare the contract with the German Navy as void. So the ship would stay in Friedrichshafen and would technically not be a military airship. That way they tried to avoid handing it out to another country. So Lehmann and von Gemmingen, so the two who developed the spy basket back in 1915, planned a trip across the Atlantic with L-72. The direct distance to New York from Friedrichshafen is 6,345 kilometers. So if the return trip would be 13,000 kilometers and they would travel with 100 kilometers per hour average speed, they would have needed 130 hours for the trip. During the war, Lehmann was on a mission above the Baltic Sea for more than 100 hours. And the Africa trip of L-59 in 1917 took over 95 hours. So Lehmann and von Gemmingen were confident that such a trip would be possible. Also, we have to remind ourselves that a Zeppelin generates lift through its hydrogen gas. So even if it stops in the air, it can still float. So in contrast to planes, the duration of the trip is not the important factor, important is the distance. And the range of L-72, with now fuel tanks instead of bombs, should have been around 16,000 kilometers which would have been more than enough. Britain and France would not have liked this plan and so it stayed secret. They planned to either slip through the English Channel at night or fly around Britain in the north. Also, they only wanted to inform the Americans a day before their arrival and ask for permission to fly over American soil. Long and intense discussions followed and finally the Zeppelin company agreed to the plan. Lehmann was in charge. They prepared L-72 and wanted to use the first good weather in March 1919. Because the intention of this trip was not a personal record for the Zeppelin crew, but to show the capabilities of German technology, they informed the German government in Berlin. And since then, lots of difficulties came up. No official department wanted to take responsibility and everyone was scared of some revenge action by France and Britain. Remember, everything was possible at that time as you heard in the previous episode. Officials in Berlin thought it might be possible that if L-72 secretly flies to New York, France could occupy Friedrichshafen, confiscate the Zeppelin company or even destroy it. Von Bernsdorf, previously German ambassador in the USA, said to Lehmann, if you would have done this trip before the United States joined the war, it would have been amazing. But now that both countries were fighting against each other, and also because it's just a few months after the war ended, you have to consider that you might not be welcomed in the US and that you could even worsen the relationship between Germany and USA. Lehmann also thought about that, but he thought the impression of this trip would be overwhelming. In the meantime, the German Navy cancelled their contract with the Zeppelin factory and the ship was now officially owned by a private company. The time was right in April 1919. L-72 was fully prepared and the weather was good enough for the trip. On both sides of the walkway were all the fuel tanks. Lehmann also took less water ballast to be able to take more fuel. Also, they put in a workshop to be able to repair things on the way and they installed two comfortable group rooms for the crew. The side walls of the engine cars could be opened to be able to do difficult repairs during the journey. L-72 was suspended without hydrogen gas in the hangar. The hoses were connected to refuel the ship with hydrogen as soon as the confirmation came from Berlin. But one morning when Lehmann came to the factory, 
he was handed a telegram from Berlin informing him that it was strictly forbidden to undertake the America trip. The telegram didn't give Lehmann a reason why they shouldn't fly. But he found out shortly after. The Inter-Allied Commission learned about what Lehmann and von Gemmingen planned and forbid it. The Zeppelin crew was highly disappointed and didn't really understand why, until a few weeks later the British airship R-34, a copy of the captured Zeppelin L-33, crossed the Atlantic and brought this record to Britain. And a little side note, while Lehmann was preparing the L-72 for the New York trip, Captain Dietrich was planning a similar journey with his sister ship, the L-71. His plan was to fly to New York and to stay in the air until they ran out of fuel. They wanted to land in America and fix the airship somewhere in the landscape. That way, the world would have seen what Zeppelins are capable of, and Britain wouldn't get the L-71. But also he asked for permission in Berlin and they rejected his plan, saying they have enough problems at the moment and don't want to create new ones. In the end, L-71 had to be handed over to Britain a year later and they never used the ship and disassembled it. Also, L-72 was sitting in the hangar for another year until the Zeppelin company was instructed to hand it over to France. At the end of the war, France had a couple of blimps and small airships with 4000 and 10,000 cubic meter gas volume. Now they got a modern war Zeppelin L-72 with 68,500 cubic meter and the smaller civil Zeppelin LZ-121 with 22,500 cubic meter. So for the war winners, shutting down German airship industry and taking over the latest Zeppelins was a big step up in technology. A too big step in some ways, as they didn't have the experiences and infrastructure with these large Zeppelins. L-72 was brought to Maubeuge in July 1920 by a German crew. It was renamed to Dixmude there, a village that was destroyed in the war and rebuilt. But they didn't have a hangar that was big enough for the L-72. And so it was sitting there for a while and the gas cells, made of gold beater skin, in other words cow appendix skin, were aging. Because they were not used, they were aging quicker and needed to be replaced, which was something France wasn't prepared for. And so L-72 was sitting for three years until it was flown by a French crew and they installed a small additional passenger cabin. In 1923, it did some impressive trips across the Mediterranean Sea, including a 118-hour journey, which brought the record for the longest airship flight to France. But in December 1923, it suddenly disappeared. Because no one survived, it is not clear what exactly happened. But it looks like it got into a thunderstorm, which basically is not a problem for a Zeppelin and they did this many times during the war. But you have to remember to not release hydrogen gas while you are in the thunderstorm, surrounded by flashes and with a Zeppelin hull with a static charge or a St. Elmo's fire. Also, Zeppelin crews always took a thunderstorm at a low altitude to avoid engaging the automatic overpressure valves of the gas cells. That would also release hydrogen gas which could lead to an explosion. Until today, it's not really clear what exactly happened to L-72, but bodies of the crew and burnt fuel tanks were found days and weeks later at the coast of Sicily. In terms of number of victims, it was the second worst airship accident until today. First being the accident of the USS Akron. The image of airships in France was at a low point. LZ-121, Mediterranee, was limited to short journeys and demolished in 1926. And that was the end of large airships in France. I hope you enjoyed this little look back in history and see you at the next video.